One of the challenges with going on a bulk is gaining body fat. Now, aside from strength training and exercising properly, here's something you could do to minimize fat gain. Eat way more protein. In other words, a very high calorie diet that puts you in a surplus that has a good amount of protein will make you gain more body fat than one that has most of those calories coming from extra protein. It's true. Even though studies show that there's a maximum benefit you can get from protein when it comes to muscle building, you're actually less likely to gain body fat when your excess calories are coming from protein. So it's just one thing you can do when you go into bulk to minimize fat gain. So studies will show this, right? Protein, protein, protein. <laughs> yeah. So it's like if you're if you're already at one gram per pound of body weight and you need to increase your calories by, let's say, another 300 calories. Yeah. And you're like, do I do it with carbs or fat? Uh, if you did it with protein, you're less likely to gain body fat from that than you would from the fat or carbs. Um, so it's just... No, it's, exactly. So the only thing, it's just a little more difficult because you get satiated, right? And so to up your, your calorie intake is going to That's the one challenge. That's, that's why I was going to say... Some creative if, uh, yes, options. That's why if you're in a bulk, I was just going to say that, Justin, it's hard when you're eating a bulk anyway, because you're eating more calories, if it's super high protein, it's even harder because protein's so satiating. So a strategy you can use is to get a hyper palatable protein shake. So like uh, like the Paleo Valley chocolate bone broth, which tastes oh, like yeah. chocolate donuts. Well, it does actually. Have, have, I have, can literally. verify it finally. Oh, oh, what'd you think? Yeah. Oh, oh it, was, yeah, it was like a shake. Am I like, telling the like, truth? Yeah. yeah, like milkshake. Yeah, you could have like a 20 gram shake with each meal or a 30 gram shake with each meal or something like that, right? Now you've just bumped your calories it's an easier way to take in the calories because it's liquid um, and you're less likely to gain body fat than if you added carbs uh, or fats. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, have you ever experimented with anything like that? Adding protein when I'm trying well, to bulk? even higher you? though than, than let's say the, the one gram per pound oh, of body Oh God, weight. of course. Yeah. No, I, I mean, when I was competing and you're, when I'm pushing that many calories, uh, it was actually almost impossible not to be more than one and a half. Okay. Yeah, it was hard. Uh, if anything, I had to be, careful not to go too extreme with that but when you're you're eating that many calories and 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 trying to hit protein intake at that point i'm hitting 300 grams many times to on a regular basis now granted remember i've talked about working my way up there and if i'm not dieting if i'm eating how i am right now i'm the other so i'm one extreme or the other if i'm hardcore bodybuilder me training like crazy pe meal prepping I'm super high on the protein intake because I know how crucial that is. If I'm not, my body, I'm just, I'll naturally gravitate to carbohydrates, sugars, yeah. you know, stuff like that. And yeah. so, yeah, no, I've uh, experimented with that all the way. And then also making sure that I, when I go off of training with the high protein diet, that I'm careful to not go to the opposite extreme right away because that's one of the fastest recipes for me to pare down and lose muscle. Mm -hmm. So just by simply keeping that up, or trying to keep it up as high as I can while I'm going the other direction makes a huge difference on me being able to retain lean yeah. body mass. Yeah, and I noticed you put like easily digestible protein because like also too, I mean, if you're doing that from like all animal sources and whole foods, like I can imagine some people having a hard time in terms of like, you know, maybe constipation or something being a th an issue, like maybe upping their fiber intake alongside that might be a good strategy. Yeah, so psyllium husk is good. You can add that to um, your meals to help with digestion. Add your, you know, well-cooked vegetables. But mainly it's when people add, when they go real high protein and then they add a lot of shakes on top of it, a lot of people don't realize that they don't digest their shakes very well. So you hear people talk about how Oh yeah, if I have more than one, you know, protein shake, I fart and whatever yes. clears the room, or I feel whatever. So pick one that's really easy to digest. Uh, I, I I talked about the bone broth because it's mainly collagen. Collagen's super. In fact, it's the one protein that's pretty universally recommended to people with gut issues because it's benefit in the gut, but also because it's easy to digest. Yeah. So it's like if you're gonna eat that much protein. Uh, and you're doing it with a shake because it's hard to get it from Whole Foods um, if, in a bulk, uh, choose one that's really easy uh, to digest. But, you know, just to, again, hammer this home, you know, if your fats are good, because so, so this isn't what I'm, the advice I'm giving here, if you're, if you could use an increase in fats because you need more healthy fats or essential fatty acids, we'll go there first, right? Carbs are not essential. So you can go zero carbs, even on a bulk, but they're not, it's not ideal to go zero carbs and a bulk because you tend to limit your strength and your performance. So let's say those were already okay. Fats and carbs are okay, but hey, I got to add another 400 calories. Uh, if you make it protein, 
you're less likely to gain body fat. You're more likely to gain more muscle. Uh, fat, uh, excuse me, protein has got this kind of thermogenic effect along with it. So like a calorie is not exactly a calorie in this particular sense uh, because protein tends to be utilized more for tissue. It's a little bit more expensive to burn. Um, so it's just, it's, it's harder to gain body fat on the same calories when the protein's high versus when the calorie, when the protein is lower. So that's the point here, right? It's like, okay, I want to go to bulk, but a lot of times, especially with women, they're afraid of like gaining body fat. It's uh, like yeah. bump the protein up. Even if you're at a, a gram of protein per pound of body weight, bump the protein up and you're less likely to gain body fat. Of course, combine it with really good strength training and kind of, you know, watch what happens. All right. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Anabolic Advanced. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this video. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, uh, we have a sale going on this month on some workout programs. MAPS Cardio is 50% off. The Shredded Summer Bundle of Workout Programs is 50% off. And the Bikini Bundle of Programs is also 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So. How's your guys' training going right now? All right. Um, I think um, I, I've been experimenting with some old school lifts and doing some things, uh, trying to get back into some of the unconventional side of things a bit. So, um, yeah, it's been kind of fun. More like grip training and intensive grip training. And, oh, yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, getting back. Into, and, and too, like uh, we were having a conversation at lunch really about sleds, and that was one of those things that like – I notice when I haven't done them for a while and then I get back into it and like what that just does for me from our overall like training volume in general. Like I just don't, I feel like I'm, I'm way less volume uh, in, in terms of for the week when I'm not, you know, incorporating the sled. Uh, so that's something I started doing up again and it's helped kind of bring my energy levels up, my strength and all that too. The sled is like, uh, God, I wish I, I used it for my clients, but I never used it for myself when I was younger. I wish I knew, the benefits for, uh, I mean, for muscle building, mobility, I need the least amount of uh, priming and warming up to do it. I almost never or ever feel the day after like, ooh, that's a little tight there. Or it's always, I always feel good yeah. from doing the sled. And then strength and muscle gains are great on it. Um, when I add the sled, then my other lifts tend to go up. It's like right. this, it's like a weird combination of uh, recuperative and performance, which a lot of exercises fall under one or the other. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I totally love this. So I, I do that probably once a week, but with, with my workouts, I'm going back into lower rep training. Although I was sick last week, so I had to kind of back off and go real easy, but I'm going back to lower rep training just Everybody's to see, right I'm just having fun. Yeah. I'm trying to see how, how strong I can get. Yeah, I, yeah. I have a goal of, I mean, who knows if this, this, this will happen and I'm not going to push it to the point where I hurt myself, but I'd like to get, I got a 605 pound deadlift, what, four months ago? I'd like to one day get to like 700 if possible. <laughs> Being the 700 club. That'd right. be crazy, right? <laughs> the, I mean, fun. that's crazy being in your mid forties and already been like at your peak of training for a long time to try and move a hundred pounds up on your deadlift. Well, that's, now I got hormones optimized. I'm all, every, I mean, that, every you do, I, I mean, I you do have, but I mean, <laughs> I, I tell you what though, I mean, you do have that to your advantage, which does help you. Of course. But I also think that it's an example of uh, highlights that you are already optimizing so much of everything else that it's hard to, I mean, that's just shows you like, yes, hormones make a massive difference. But when you're somebody who's doing all the other big yeah. rocks, it doesn't make as massive a difference as you would think it would. Like yeah. people just assume, like, oh, okay, he's on hormones yeah. now, so oh yeah. yeah, this that everything's easier. Oh, that, it's like no, it's like you were doing a lot of those, all those things before, and then now that's optimized. So of course, it gives you a little more yeah. of an edge. I mean, I, I'm saying I'd like to do it. Will I? I'm very unlikely. <laughs> uh, I definitely don't want to hurt myself. Yeah. Um, but I just, uh, it would be great just to be able to say that. So what are you up to these days, Adam? Uh, you know, I've had like a shitty past two weeks. My Ever since we went to Nashville, I, I think I trained twice since then. So I've had like really an off off couple weeks. Um, we had people sick at the house. I've had, you know, all the normal excuses. 
but I just haven't been feeling in the, in the, I haven't been in my rhythm again. You look I, like you had a good workout on, was it Friday? That was one of the better ones, right? Yeah, I did. You had your was, headphones on, you were getting Yes, it was. That was actually, a, that was a, a, a decent, that was probably my best lift since we've been back from Nashville is that you're right. So I, I'm starting to, I, you know, I didn't get sick. Like you went through like a really nasty cold for a week. Katrina and Max both got sick. I never got sick like all of you guys, but it felt like my body was trying to fight off whatever yeah. you so guys you had like a mild down. version of it. Yeah. And so I just, every day I had like this kind of itchy throat and I didn't have the energy and stamina. I wasn't getting the best of sleep because I wasn't breathing well at night. And so I've just kind of been, um, I've been off. I really haven't been on my shit lately. So now thank God for the, you know, um, Don Saladino and, and shooting us all those meals. I mean, that's been a lifesaver for me because oh, totally. Yeah, having those having those meals already ready, and so I can, at least I'm making good food choices, right? So like that's probably the biggest thing. I know I've brought this up probably a hundred times now on the show, but you know, it's this has been my journey, like with health and fitness. Is in my twenties. I, I I swung the pendulum really hard left to right all the time. It was like I'm on, I'm jacked, I'm fit, I'm doing it, doing it all. Yeah. When I'm not eating like an asshole, not doing anything. And then, and I would just allow my, my body fat and percentage and everything to sh just swing or where I just, the swings are way less now. Like I really, you know, I'm, I'm very mindful of when I'm, I'm not in the rhythm. I'm not, you know, I'm not tracking my protein. I'm not staying consistent with the training to really be mindful of how I allow myself to kind of go off the rails with nutrition. And because of that, it's, it's been nice, man. It's like, I, when I do kick it back up, it's like, Within a week, I already feel, you know, Katrina always complains or talks shit like, oh my God, it's so frustrating watching you. Like, I feel like I train always consistently. You take breaks all the time and then you get right back in it. And it's like, you're right back to shape. And just think I've really, really stopped those those crazy swings. And so I don't feel that You got that anymore. muscle memory just working for you. I think the longer you do this, the longer you're consistent, the easier it is to get back in shape when you get out of shape. Yeah. It really it really is. Like I, I feel like uh I feel like that's not expressed enough. You know, there's so much talk around getting older how much it sucks. Yeah. You know, how many, oh you're you're an old man now and oh and the the fear of being an older dad and like ain't gonna be able to move with your son and like there's there's all this negative shit about yeah getting older i'm like shit i'd be honest with you like okay you're right like i can't jump up and dunk a basketball like i was but then i also haven't trained to do that right i also know if i applied myself i could do a lot of these things if i really cared but what i love is the ability to maintain strength and muscle and a, and, a, and a, a physique that i trained my ass off in my 20s trying to get to where mm -hmm. by default i i mean bad shape me looks better than great shape me in his 20s working out seven days a week every single day for years i know this needs to be communicated more it's not i used to you know what i used to say that i was wrong on i used to tell people whatever you do to get in shape is what you have to do to stay in shape right that's actually not true with strength yeah. training at least yep with strength training the amount of training and volume that you need to let's say build five pounds of muscle and let's say bench press 200 pounds you need maybe a third or less of the volume and training to maintain. In fact, some studies show even less than that. Mm -hmm. Some show a little more, but it, but the point is less. Yeah. So it's like, you mean you, I could get in shape and then like just to stay in shape, I can kind of maintain it with way less work? You can, yeah. as it's, long as your diet's bro, good, right? I, sometimes I feel guilty, but I also think it's important to communicate this on a podcast like this is that, you know, I, I'm really not neurotic about my fitness at all. Like I, 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 I hit the big blocks or the big rocks. I take care of it. Um, I allow myself to have this freedom of having drinks and going off, going off a little bit of not training for two weeks. And I don't stress about none of it. It's like, and then I can get right back in it and it doesn't take a lot. I ain't going to train hell hard. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's wild that when you've laid that solid foundation of, of years and decades in, in, in this case for all of us of training, actually how easy it is to, stay and, and maintain a, a good healthy physique and stay in good shape is it's really not that difficult i think we really over it the hard part it's really is, the ideal place to be it, it I, if at least i feel selfishly i feel that way i feel like i don't have to think about it hardly at all yeah. just to make sure i get in and i you know another really big one that has helped me as i've gotten older um that i didn't do in my early 20s that i do now is, is prioritizing the big lifts 
Like I was, I was a typical 20 year old teenage lifter where it was like uh, the beach muscles, yeah. the curls, yeah. all the cool. I love new machines. I was so into machines. Yep. So a hammer strength was out. I was like, you know, I was doing stupid shit by like trying to get strong on a hammer strength. It's like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, mm -hmm. I don't even mess around with that stuff anymore. It's like, as long as I can bench squat, deadlift, overhead press, and I, I can do all of those right now, cold, not lifting for two weeks, stronger than what I was 10 years ago, yeah. you know, or in the, in the middle of my twenties, like, and that has ma maintained this amount of lean body mass on me and strength more, more in my forties than I, I ever had my peak in my twenties. Yeah. And, and, and just for, you know, if you do start to feel bad as you get older, all you gotta do is look at your peers at the same age who don't yeah. exercise. <laughs> you know what's scary, dude? It is because we're now, we're now in 40, right? We're in our forties now. Like I saw this happening in like mid to late thirties with some of my peers, like people who are like my age that I, I you know, friends and family and you see their health, like, cause you get away with it when you're twenties. Like if you don't work out in your twenties, you're not going to be ripped. But if you're not like obese or whatever, you, you know, you're okay. But then like 30 mid thirties, I started seeing people like, Oh my God, what's happening now? People are starting to get on my medications. Mm -hmm. And oh, my doctor said I need to do this stuff. And I'm like, holy cow, dude, you're 43 years old. That's when it gets away from you yeah. completely. Yeah. yeah, dude, it's really, or I, I mean, can't do that anymore. I can't do this keep because it I can't. Apart, I mean, it really, it, it compounds in both directions. Mm -hmm. So if you were the person who chose not to make any healthy choices, yeah. not exercise, not doing that stuff all through your teens, 20s and 30s, it's now compounded. And it's very obvious yeah. when you start getting in your 40s and your 50s. And the opposite is true. Maybe you, if you were somebody who's always made that a part of your life, even if you weren't hardcore about it all the time, but it's been a part of your life that you've made an effort to eat better, to train, to get strong over the course of decades, like it's compounded now. And there's a, there's a massive difference between the, those types of bodies today. It's why, and yeah. we see it. I, it's obviously way more uh, at the forefront for us in our forties now than it was when you were, like do, you said, do you guys know 30. anybody yeah. that in their twenties? I'm sure you do. In their 20s, they just went too hard. Like party, drinks, <laughs> yeah. drugs. And they got away with it for whatever reason. They were like good looking and fit enough and they got away this with is it. Half my friends. Yeah. And then and then you start to see like now if you see these people now, you're like, oh, you you went too hard in your twenties. <laughs> yeah. And you went yeah. now you look like you're 80. Uh, we had a I, it dude, I had a, up to you. I mean, this is kind of top of mind for me right now. Not if we were I don't know if we were intending to go this direction or not, but I my stepdad came over. He was over yesterday. He came over, uh, him and his wife, and I hadn't seen him in a few months. And uh, we had just redone a bunch of stuff in the house and furniture and everything like that. And when we did this, we were also moving uh, the old bookshelf in case. And we had out um, these books that I used to make for Katrina and I on my first day. We were dating 12 years now. And I used to do our first year or second year or third year of like photos of all of us. And so he had, he's like, oh, my God, I've never seen these. And he pulled them out. And they were like going through like all these photos yeah. of her and I 12 years ago when we first met. And they're like, oh my God, it's so crazy. You guys are in your 40s and you guys are in way better shape, look younger and better right now. And I'm like, oh my God, it's like the best compliment yeah, no, you could yeah, ever I mean, give yes. me. And I, I mean, that's hard to say too, considering that I obviously have had a, a much uh, better physique at one point, you know, over the course of the 12 years. But when we first met, when Katrina and I first met, I considered myself a fitness person uh, 10 years into my career of already being a personal trainer and stuff like that. And I was in mm -hmm. relatively good shape. But even then, like, when I look back at some of these, you know, beach photos of her and I, when we both would have considered ourselves in good shape, that doesn't even come close to what I think like out of shape looks like now in our forties. And that's all because of the cumulative effects, but also because of the wisdom of how to train yeah. your body right, how yeah. to eat right. Gym well, intelligence. Yeah, dude. It makes a huge, uh, speaking of getting older, and looking good and all that stuff. Did you guys, have you guys started that series on, on Netflix, the Arnold oh, one? Yeah. yeah. So Adam mentioned it in the uh, text thread. And then it was funny because I got a chance to go hang out with my family at our place in Palm Desert. And I was walking out in the morning uh, to have coffee. And I like to sit out there and kind of listen to the, you know, the birds and all that stuff. And uh, I look and on the TV was Arnold and, and there's Ethan just watching it intentively on his own. He's like really like ever since like we watched um, Predator and then we've been watching kind of these action movies from the 80s and stuff like he's starting to really kind of get into like Arnold and his whole like. Uh, How old is he now? Can someone look at it? Is he 70, 75? 75? 75? Yeah. yeah. So in, the, in there, they're interviewing him current. Yeah. 
And he for a 75 year old? No, he looks better right now than he did just about 10 years ago. So he's probably back he, on his regimen or yeah, something. Yeah, he looks really healthy. He yeah. was talking shit about himself slipping too, which yeah. is great. Yeah. But you want to talk about uh the old like the epitome of the American yeah. immigrant, you know, dream, right? Like yep. this guy literally um defines that. I mean, he didn't he 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 was from another country, came here. Became a millionaire before he ever became an actor yeah, yeah. Uh, through whatever, his chosen sport, which was bodybuilding, built businesses, went to night school, you know, bought, you know, know, learned how to invest, then decided he's going to become an, a, an action star and they made fun of him. You're not going to change your name. Nobody can say your last name. It's a yeah. long ass last name. You have an accent. Who's going to want to put you in movies? Bro, they, he, he, first the he, first made a goal, he first yeah. made a goal just to become an actor and they laughed at him. Just mm -hmm. become an actor. Yeah. But that's in the movies. And then he was like, I want to be the, the star. One. Yeah, I want to be the star, role star. And they really laughed at him. And so. he did. Yeah. And then, and then he's like, I'm going to be come i'm a republican who's yeah. going to become the governor of, Cal of california <laughs> yeah and he did yeah you know that they 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 incorporate democrats into his uh, uh administration he married a kennedy and, yeah, yeah. Dude, it was do you like, know do you know how he they, broke all the rules he did do you know that there's a that there, there's there's a it's not really a popular debate but every once in a while the debate comes up as to whether or not we should allow a foreign born individual who's been a naturalized citizen for let's say two and a half decades so let's say it's like you weren't born here, but you've been a citizen for 25 years yeah. mm -hmm. that you should be eligible to run for president, right? Because yeah. in the Constitution, you have to be naturally born. You have to be born here. Mm -hmm. That debate gained steam because of Arnold. Oh, uh, I bet. Because when he became, when he got the, you know, became the governor of California, yeah. everybody was like, if this guy could run, that he would get elected. So that's not, I was wondering about that uh, in terms of like, uh, so you can, obviously you can become governor, but like. No. What, what, but you can't be a president. No. You can't, yeah. You have yeah. to be born here. Right. Yeah. So, but, but that's the only office is, is that you have to be naturally born here Correct. in politics. Yes. And I think that, I mean, I understand why, right? What you don't want is like some foreign government to plant someone here to eventually. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But I mean, I, I like the, you know, standard of like 25 years, you have to be a natural, you know, naturalized citizen here yeah. or whatever. Or, yeah. You know? oh, yeah. So there was a story he told uh, that I, I thought was hilarious. Um, and he was talking about like when he was first coming on board with James Cameron to do Terminator. Uh, yeah. And uh, he was talking about, because originally they had cast, so he was not it John was, Connor, was but, but, but O.J. Simpson o. was oh, going to be the Terminator. That was the best line of the documentary. Yeah, yeah. The and he's line. like, and, and they just determined that O.J. just wasn't the killing type. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that line, that line in the like, documentary is the best line of the whole documentary. Because you can hear the cameraman yeah. interviewing. So he interviews, he's interviewing Arnold, and, and Arnold is telling the story that Justin's sharing yeah. right now and from his perspective. And he's like, yeah, they originally had uh, yeah. O.J., but they didn't think he was the killing type. Yeah. And there's like this <laughs> <There's> just, <laughs> you, silence, you, you know, silence, and then you hear the like, cameraman in the back. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> You're like, oh my God, that was the best line. Oh, you know what? I want, and I couldn't wait for you guys to watch this so I could ask you because you're- you know, I only so, watched the first episode. Okay, but, see, uh, so then you might not have got to this part. I didn't know this. I think this is episode two. Is, did you know that Stallone and him- had like a serious rivalry. Well, they were competitive. They did not like each other. Now I didn't know how far it went. So I, I didn't know, but that. I did know that they were rivals because they were they compete over being the top action star yeah. at the time. Well, and I didn't know. Yeah, and that, it, it makes perfect sense because you'd see like Rambo came out, did so well. All of a sudden, then you see Commando, Commando uh -huh. and I didn't know that was like what I, what spurred Commando. Totally. Yeah. Like I mean, now that I now looking back, and you go like how the movies all dropped. I mean, I remember when all those came out. I'm like, oh, that is so funny. You know, as a kid, you're just assuming like, oh, it's so the next action movie comes out, and your two favorite stars. Yeah, are, I was like, oh yeah, but it was Normal literally version. like a response. Yeah. It was like, oh, he did that. I'm gonna yeah. do this. I even super competitive. Yeah, yeah. and you know, I mean, he even talked about like how they killed in it. He's like, oh, he killed everybody with a gun like this, so I yeah. killed him with a bigger gun. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> just kid. Well, He's you know like that, that competitive and rocket launcher. And you know, yeah. Franco Colombo, yeah. who was Arnold's like best friend, right? Trained Sylvester Stallone for Rocky three, I, I believe, or four. So oh. they had. So then Franco oh, went and trained. That. Yeah. Okay. So know. okay. So uh, I don't know. You guys aren't gonna remember this, but Rocky four, when he fights the Russian, mm -hmm. and he's like just jacked and shredded. In Rocky 3 too, he got super shredded when he fought Mr. T. Mm -hmm. You'll notice, I don't know which side it is, his left pec, I think it is. It looks a little different because he tore it training with Franco because Franco, Franco worked out with him. Heavy, dude. And, Franco, and he kept trying to push heavier weights to match Franco. And Franco's like, you probably shouldn't, you know, I don't think you should lift it that much. Yeah. And Stallone kept pushing it towards his pec. Oh, wow. Yeah, because Franco's like, uh, yeah, tranquil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude. He is insanely strong. He's a 180 pound little, 
like picking up cars, like just dude, he insane. Was a beast. But the whole story about how he he came to this country, it's crazy because he says he came here. You know, he grew up in Austria, right? And then he came here and he goes, "I'm home." You know, talks yeah. about being in America, how this is his home. I mean, he talked about it before he was even yeah. here that he felt crazy. the calling to to do that. You know, the other thing that I, that struck me as interesting that I never connected to him at, that he really made popular. Um, you know, big big vehicles like the Hummer. Yeah, he did. Uh, the big face watches. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you know, that was his, it was, know. it was, uh, all, they, they attribute a lot of him as the, the, the person who cigars. made that. Yeah. The yeah. cigar brought like cigars weren't as popular. You know, you see like, I mean, we see this today in our space, like, you know, it's like the cool thing to smoke. So everyone to smoke cigars now and stuff like that. So people are like, I don't smoke cigarettes. It's unhealthy cigar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? It just looks cool. Let's be honest. Yeah, one looks cool. Like, one doesn't. I, yeah. I, and I, I prefer didn't, cigars. I didn't realize too, that it was him who made that popular. Right? He's a, a fitness guy, health yeah. fitness guy who smoked cigars now, all the time. It, is it true? Cause I don't watch like the series, but is it true that the, he is the one that got Humvee to make one for the road. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So it was all military. He says, yeah. I want one for the road. The commercialized version. Yeah, and is, then yeah. that's what made the, them get the demand. And it's super popular because oh, okay. he used to drive all that stuff around. He also had a, 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 he had when he was in California, when he was the governor, you can't drive those with climate. He made a, uh, <laughs> he made a cigar. He made a cigar tent. Uh -huh. So like every day so that was like on the, on the, on the, oh, cause you couldn't smoke. Yeah, he couldn't smoke inside the building. So he had a cigar tent where he hung out most of the day and then everybody come down and come see Schmooze him. So with the different politicians. Yeah. Wow. It was well done. The yeah. documentary it was, 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 uh, I thought, I thought it was well done. I, I still got a little bit left of it to finish up, but I thought it was I did, really yeah, in the begin In the first one, when he's talking, there was old interviews that were never aired. So I saw some, some stuff from him that I'd never seen before. And I think it was, it looked like it was outtakes or something from Pumping Iron. Mm. And he's telling the camera guy about steroid use, which oh, was yeah. never in Pumping Iron. They never talk about steroids in Pumping Iron. Yeah. But in there he says how, and this is true back in the 70s, you get it from a doctor, you do it for four months, then you go off. And he said that it was, this is responsible for about 5% of my gains. Knowing what I know about the sport, what they took back and all that stuff, he's, he was being very honest. Mm -hmm. oh, that yeah. was a very honest oh, yeah. uh, uh, assessment. So what he was shooting for, I don't think it's pumping iron. He did another one. He did. There was a a, a bodybuilding. It wasn't a documentary. It was a movie that was shot even before pumping iron. But they shot it, and it wasn't supposed to be released until almost a year later. And in the meantime, he did Pumping Iron, and then Pumping Iron got released, and that's what made it. It wasn't movie. Hercules comes to New York. No, no, no. It was. No. It was a. It was a bodybuilding it was movie. A bodybuilding movie. Yeah, I forgot yeah. the name of it though. I'm, oh, it's, I'm I know what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, maybe Doug. Stay hungry. Stay hungry. Oh, what? Hungry, yes, yeah. with Sally Field. Yes. and Jeff Bridges. Now yeah. that was a drama though. A drama yes, time. it wasn't like a documentary. Yeah, no, it was a documentary at all. Yeah. It was, but that movie was he shot that first. Wow. And was all excited about that. And he was so bummed that it was it was like forever going to, it was taking take a year to get released. And in the meantime, he got the- Pump air. Yeah. Did you know that he did, he was in uh, I Love Lucy one episode? Yeah, they showed that. The, <laughs> yeah. They showed oh, that. they did? Yeah, yeah they showed that yeah. in the documentary. He's, he's a masseuse. Masseuse. They actually were using that as like showing how like terrible of an actor he was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when he just, he, he, he couldn't do the facial expressions and all this stuff like that. Well, that, so. that to me, it was like, okay, that, that, I was trying to figure out how old he was. And then I was like, Dude, he's got to be up in like because I Love Lucy was like, yeah. what, what was that, 50s? It yeah. was yeah, popular yeah. and yeah. then it like kind of stayed on air a bit, but like really old show. Yeah. How about how about the uh, the famous Terminator line? How that came to be? Oh, yeah. That was cool. Was that an improv? So that yeah. was so, yeah. And, and he actually got into it with James Cameron. Yep. So he improv and said he was supposed to be, um, I'm coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, I'll come back. Yeah. I'll, like I'll come back or something like that. And he, and he says, I'll be back. And he goes, no. And he, and James Cameron was like, no, you say it like this. And he, and he, and he argued with you and he says, are you the director? And like he got into a big old thing with him. Mm -hmm. And then he, and so as, and then right after he got done arguing with him, he looked at James Cameron and he said it like the Terminator. I'll be back. I'll be back. And he and walked he, away. He sold him on it. And he sold him on it right there. And he goes, Okay, you could do that. Wow. And he let him do it. And then, of course, ends and up it's being the most like, iconic line. He it has. is. It's, wow. I think that's it's still the most iconic line ever yeah. in, a, in a movie. You Isn't know, that that's, funny? that's a, uh, that one, Terminator, the first one, and the second one, uh, Stand the Test of Time. Mm -hmm. Even today, I mean, obviously, the effects and stuff. But if you watch them, the story is, is still exceptional. It's one that, that's just, it lasts. You, did you know that yeah. he didn't want to do the second one? 
because of him not uh, one. He didn't want he, to be the good guy. Yeah, he, first he had to close him on being the villain, so he almost didn't do the first one. The first one he was didn't want to be because he wants to be a superstar, loved by everybody. Yeah. Trying to James Cameron's trying to sell him on being the villain for number one, and he's like, I don't want to do it, don't want to do it. They convince him to do it. Of course, it goes gangbusters. It's amazing. Then the second one comes around, and he's like, now I want you to be the good guy and. You don't get to kill anybody. And that's right in the heart yeah. of when he's competing with Stallone. Oh, and see. Stallone's killing everybody and doing all this cool <laughs> shit. And he's just like, he's he wants to be able to kill. <laughs> he's like, no. And he negotiated, you know, to shoot him in the leg. That's hilarious. So in Terminator 2, when there's all those parts oh, is that what? where he shoots him in the legs, yeah. like that, that was the compromise. He'll survive. Yeah, yeah. 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 You yeah. That You'll live. Nobody You'll live. Died. Yeah, nobody yeah. died or whatever. He'll live. That's hilarious. <laughs> you know what's funny about those movies back then is uh, it did get out of control with the action films where they got kind of comical. Uh -huh. But some of the original ones were really good, like uh, First Blood, which is the first Rambo, is a good movie. A lot of people don't know this. Yeah, it's not. It's an actually an exceptional movie. And then Rambo gets like, come on, like, shoot well, a helicopter you know, with so, a bow and arrow. You know what Stallone says about First Blood? Yeah. This was also in the documentary. I thought was really interesting. Was the that form of acting was he believed that he was on the forefront of that, which nobody was really, which was, I think first blood is famous for how many lines he had, you know, he only has like, yeah. I think less than 10 lines or something in that entire movie. And so it was becoming this actor without being able to do scenes with your facial expression yeah. and your physical prowess of your body would deliver what was supposed to be communicated on the screen. And that had, everyone had done it with words. It's mm -hmm. always been great acting and dialogue is what sold people on what was a great movie. And First Blood was the first coming of this, like, mm -hmm. you don't have to say very much and then convey a really good movie, to your yeah. point. One thing that Arnold had over Stallone. How many lines, Doug? I would say. I'm looking for it. Oh. I would say in terms of just pure acting, because Stallone has Rocky and Rocky's Academy Award, he beats him there. But with comedy, Stallone could never do comedy like Arnold. Arnold can actually do comedy. Yeah. Like he watched Twins. Yes. So He's you, actually funny. He talks about how that came came about also in there, yep. which is a crazy story. He is at a bar with the writer who did Twins, who also did, I don't remember. Ghostbusters. What, Ghostbusters, yeah. you're right. And Arnold sees him at the bar and says, I could be a Ghostbuster. He tells, <laughs> him, he tells him he could be a Ghostbuster. And the guy kind of laughed, right? And he says, oh, you know what? We'll do something in the future. And he said he left. And he had just been at Disney with Danny DeVito, and him and Danny had had just been doing some work together. And he says, "You know what? I've got an idea. The two of them would be a hilarious pairing, yeah, super and they odd couple. They were such, and that's why that was such a massive hit. It was yeah, his his wow. introduction to comedy. That's and, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was pretty that's interesting. Yeah. It says minimal lines. It doesn't give me. Oh, a give me a number. I mean, no. I can tell you half the lines of that. I've seen First Blood so many times. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's. I think I heard Stallone say less than ten, but I don't remember for for sure. It's yeah. hardly any, and they showed all the cuts, and I'm like, I didn't realize how little he does talk until you start to see all the cuts, and you're like, oh shit, he didn't say anything right there. It's actually a sad movie about a Vietnam vet with PTSD. Really? That's yeah. what the movie's about yeah. when you I watch know. it. It's, yeah. pretty, it's really messed up. Messed anyway, up. did you guys see what Dr. Andy Galpin shared about uh, muscle hyperplasia? The study so. that they that they did? No. Is this the one that uh, re instead of hyperplasia, they started relating it to fuse fusing? Yes. Okay. So, oh, with, like Dr. Seed was talking about? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So muscle fibers, it seems... What's happening is hyperplasia may still happen, but what's happening with hypertrophy with long exposures to training and intensity and all that stuff that you're doing for years and years and years is that uh, muscle fibers are fusing together to create like super fibers. Yeah. Essentially, it's what's happening. You know, that was such it's a great a bigger and just segue just, yeah. to the conversation that we were just having about getting older and training for a long period of time. Yes. And like, here's the, the science to support the benefit of that. It's not just simply like you build muscle, you lose muscle. It's like you over years and years of time. So it, they actually grow in size. Now, the theory that we thought before was you train hard enough, long enough, consistently fibers split off and create more fibers, fibers was the, was our thought, yes. right? Yep. That maybe has happened to people like us who's been living forever. Or no, what's happening is they're fusing and you're creating larger muscle fibers that are larger with less activity or the same activity. In other words, you've turned it into a super fiber. So this is where some of that muscle memory comes from, that muscle that permanent kind of muscle size. When you see, it's like when you run into somebody who's been 
a blue collar worker for their entire lives. They're retired and you're, they, you know, they were a mechanic or a construction worker and they're old now, but they're still, you can tell on their forearms, right? Like why mm-hmm. your forearms are still kind of muscular. Uh, it's probably something like that. So wow. how crazy is that? Yeah, it's wild. What a I, wild. I mean, it, it really explains though what we, we talk about where you say like, you know, I rem- I remember this, especially being an insecure skinny kid who just wanted to have build muscle. Like I remember if I was the only time I got recognized from friends or girls or the people that I lifted weights is I had to be, I was dialed. I was consistent. Yeah, yeah. The minute I fell off, if I didn't train that week, yeah. like it felt yeah. like, like nobody would even say anything or it, w- it wouldn't look like I even worked out where. From, it would just break your heart. So yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, you work out. Like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Like, like oh, Ooh, I didn't know you worked out. I mean, now, and I'm sure part of that has to do with, or I'm older, so I'm expected to not look as fit or what that, but I can like, it can come off of not training for two weeks straight. And the first thing <laughs> my dad says when he sees me is like, Oh, you look good, son. Hey, hey, you know? how, how, about, how about the best compliment you ever got in your entire life when we were at the airport? Oh, what was oh, <laughs> bro? We were at the airport. I forgot about that. This is the best. Oh, I like I Adams, I forgot. Adams it. ego, <laughs> which is pretty good. It's a pretty good side oh. ego. <laughs> oh, this is from the kid, right? Yeah, we were yeah. all standing around waiting for our luggage. I remember this. Yeah. And this kid kept staring at Adam, like just kept staring at him. And I don't know he's, what you were thinking. Yeah, you're probably like, does he listen to my input? Well, I don't know. He's yeah, kind of young. Yeah, yeah. And he walks up. To, it's one of the. It's like the. You ever meet a kid that's just? He's kind of an, like you ever meet like an awkward kid that just blurts out shit <laughs> like do you you know what i mean like, like no filter just, yeah, yeah like uh, yeah yeah like go up to are you pregnant you know like that yeah goes up to adam and just randomly is like are you a professional athlete yeah. and adam's face just <laughs> yeah yeah the biggest like smile, just dude. any you could have said any sport. now i now i yeah. realize this is why i haven't worked yeah. out for yeah. the last two weeks <laughs> What did we say? He's like I, professional handball uh, guy. And Justin yeah, and I were like, oh, come on, bro. Like, you got to play. You got to lean into it. Yeah. Oh, come on. Uh. That's why I haven't worked out two weeks. I'm like, oh, I'm good. I'm are you, good. Are you a professional athlete? <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> the truth is, it's the way I dress. That's why my cousins told my my younger cousin, Brett has told me this before, right? So Brett say that because of the way you dress. Yeah, I, dude, I was, yes, I'm for sure. I'm wearing, I'm wearing. He wants more compliments. I'm wearing, it's because you're no, a big, a, tall this, guy. No, well, okay, sure. Sure, you could say that. You're I a big, mean, tall guy. Yeah, Come on. And I then did. you're hanging around with other, you know, you know, not as tall, but big dudes. Yeah. <laughs> like, these are probably like, you know, the general manager, like the equipment manager. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, are you a pro athlete or yeah. are these your training yeah. partners or something yeah. like that? Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think if I thought of it more. <laughs> you're talking to me? Oh, not me? Yeah. I thought of it more of the negative thing. I'm like, it, to me, I thought about, oh, it's like, I got to really work on the way I dress. I, I still dress like I'm a lot younger. Than <laughs> I should have asked him what's more. You, yeah, you should have asked that. He's all bowling. I feel, <laughs> I feel like he was looking at my shoes and the way I was dressed and things like that. That's what made me think that. And and then maybe I look like I still had, had a little, I, bit, I remember a little just, bit athleticism. I remember distinctly, too. We're standing there, and I remember looking at his kid like, what's this kid staring at, bro? Yeah, he yeah. kept just staring. She was like trying to figure out his wheels yeah. just clicking. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What should sport? I, should I ask for an autograph or yeah. should I ask him first? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the only I've had an I've, only time I've ever had something like that happen to me, which is not is totally different. Nobody ever accused me of being a professional athlete. <laughs> no one's ever asked me that. <laughs> they just have to watch me Ball move. Champion. Oh yeah, no, no, that's not yeah. an athlete. No, I had I've had I had a plastic surgeon ask me where I got my my nose job. Wow. Yeah. What? Yeah, I told you guys that that's, before. That's fantastic. This has happened to me from a plastic surgeon too. This, well, hold on a second. It gets even crazier. You do have a very nice you have bridge. That pretty beak. It's a very this straight is, very bridge. Beaky. Hey, very straight bridge. <laughs> with the beak it's very, very beaky. The hell's wrong with you? Bro? <laughs> I mean, Shut your face. I mean, it does have good I have, symmetry, though. I had. It does have hey, good you got symmetry. Compliment. It's got good symmetry. This has happened to me, to me twice, yeah. two separate occasions. Two plastic surgeons. I swear to God. <laughs> By the time the second one happened, I said, "Is this a joke?" And he goes, "No." Why? I said, "Why do you think I had?" A nose job. He goes, it looks really, and he gave me compliments or whatever. So it is on. It's because how, how, sim- yes, how symmetrical exactly what he said. and how straight it is. He literally said it's perfect. That's yeah. what he said to me. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. I've definitely not got that. Dude. Yeah. No, I it's fucked just, up. No, <laughs> got smashed a few times. I like, yeah. He gave just a business card. Dude. <laughs> but I off. did get, you know what I got was like my eyelashes. Like some girl came up to me and was like, oh my God, like, do you use mascara? Or, or I'm like, what? What? That's kind of not, is that a compliment? Or, no, no, it was like, whatever you, you do to like, that's right. That would be mascara. Is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, you're on the right. You're on the right. <laughs> Are you? I was is that like, the thing uh, you do to This is a weird eyelashes. flirt. I don't know what's happening right now, but I'm not into this Are conversation. You, Are you wearing makeup? That's yeah. what you said. 
Do you what are you saying? Are you saying I look like a clown? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. You got line, you got the you, well, I do have your really, son's like you. Yeah, I know my son's got got them for me. Get the giraffe sure. eyelashes. I know Katrina is just like thank God he got those because she's does she. I don't even know if I've seen. I don't think I've seen my wife without her fake eyelashes. That's like one of her things. Like she just does not miss that. Just big old eyelashes. Yeah, yeah. She's like oh, consistently had those since we were. Usually, little boys have longer eyelashes than little girls. Is that true? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. I think so. I, I really do. And I think it's is it maybe because we tend to have more hair? Yeah. Is that the deal? Now Look we should have nose hair and ear hair. So yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, you know, I used to great. hate it. I mean, it still bugs me every now and then. It's like, so I can only get certain sunglasses because my eyelashes will hit the... the <laughs> no the, way. The, oh, yeah. Then it's, <laughs> Shut then, up. Yeah, then the, oil, the oils from my, my, from my eyelashes hit the lenses and then they're all, wow. it's all blurry. So I have to get sunglasses oh God, that nice. I, can, I can wear... Further down on the bridge of my nose because if they're all the way up, remember like when like Ray Bans and like, stuff. Right? Yes. I mean, uh, Oakleys, Oakleys that were yeah, like yeah. Ray, way close. I can't wear glasses like that because my eyelashes wow. are are hitting the the lenses. Any other Super weird? Annoying. Any other weird Dang. compliments, Doug? You ever get a weird compliment about something about yourself? Yeah. Uh, good question. Yeah. Weird compliment. Yeah. Or f favorite. I, I mean, I, get, I mean, I get compliments skin. on my eyes sometimes. Yeah, oh, you do because they're blue. Eyes. They're gorgeous. Beautiful yeah, blue thank eyes. Thank you. Yeah. You do have beautiful. You get lost in them. You do. I look. Yeah. I have to like look Very away deep. when I talk to them. Do you know? Okay, so that was not my favorite compliment. But can you think of like the best compliment like a stranger has given you before in like in a public place like that? Me? Yeah. Oh God. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Um. I've uh, the nose one was weird. I've been told a lot of t my hands. I've, I've been told many times uh, that people I, like my hands. Somebody said strong thighs. And like, strong thighs. <laughs> <laughs> grabbed my leg and I was like, what the fuck? Wait, someone grabbed your leg? Yeah, you were you strong, strong thighs. thighs. What are we? That was that made me uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that made me uncomfortable right now. Strong thighs. <laughs> no, the same thing too. That's, that's yeah, an interesting. Just, well, I could crush you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, a man did this or a woman? That? It was a dude. What? Well, and a dude said and it? he grabbed strong your leg? Side. Yeah, I'm sure he hit, you know. You got eyelash collar, you got strong tech. You, you, you definitely get some. How old were you? Were you a kid? Was it an older man? <laughs> yeah. Was this a child molester? I was, like, I, was, I was in high school, dude. How old was the guy? Uh, older. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so so there you go. I have some bad news for you. I grew and you had no idea. I got a compliment that I just remembered. What'd you get, Doug? That my butt looked good in my jeans. Whoa, that's a And do you realize it was one of your wives that- Oh, that's, most, that's most likely my wife. Oh, my mine. Sure. She, she loves the compliment. <laughs> Whose wife was it? It's, what, Justin. Yeah. Oh, Courtney. wow. She wanted to find out where I got my jeans, I'm thinking it was the jeans that made them look good. Oh, wow. <laughs> Justin's wife's guilty of the wow. butt compliments, yeah. huh? Well, she's obviously a butt girl. She married to Justin. <laughs> I mean, she pays attention to the <laughs> <things. laughs> Justin. Oh, <laughs> no, but no other weird compliments? That my, cal my, my calves was the best. Oh, well, that's because that was your I, I'll never. Oh, yeah, I'll never forget being on our on our way to uh, Hawaii, Katrina and I. I remember you. that. You actually came You came to work. I think us. I told you guys yeah. on that. Or, or you texted us. Yeah, some of us. So I just got the best come. I, and it was. It was because I was like in the thick of like, I was on a mission, right? I'm on stage now. So like, I'm and I'm presenting my physique. Like yeah. I got to bring, never in once in my life that I care that much about bringing my calves up. And so I had been on a mission for like the last year or two years. And randomly, so, some older dude that has, who has sat behind me on the plane. And as we're deep, getting off the plane, it made a comment to me. So, oh man, you got great calves, dude. I'm like, oh, oh wow. <laughs> I'm complete. <laughs> I'm complete now, dude. Give him so a hug. Yeah. <laughs> you have no idea. You just like knew you needed. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah, that's yeah. all it was. Is all that guy looks I got like? Something for yeah. you, buddy. When a guy compliments your spirit. When a guy compliments you, there's a there's a, it's first of all it's awesome because dudes don't do that. I feel like it means more. It does, it, but but it can also go like if <laughs> yeah. it goes if they can go south, yeah, yeah. Really. If they're like, man, you look amazing, yeah. like thanks, bro. But if they keep going, so I don't, it, don't lean in. I don't think yeah. that's any different for I, I maybe I'm speaking out of turn, right? But the I think that's for the same thing for women too, right? Like getting a compliment from a dude who from a dude, she probably goes, oh, okay, he just wants to sleep with me, or he's just saying that to be nice. But if you get it from another woman who See, tells you something like that, I would think now that here's the difference. carries a lot of Sip, weight. Sip, women do that. Thank you. Yes. They, they do that as a lead, and, and and they'll do that even when they don't like somebody. Yes. Just, so, just to yeah, be but like, most yeah. girls are smart. They they know that. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, most yeah. girls like know, like, like there's some times where I've been with Katrina or something like that, and she's like, oh, yeah, that bitch. And I'm like, what? She said something nice. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, yeah, that's not what she meant. Yeah. 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 So, so, so smart girls know how to read that shit. Yeah, smart yeah. girls 
knows how to read that. Women not, will do that. It's they'll, not what it actually yeah. means. I'm like, huh? <laughs> they'll give you a compliment, but yeah. really what they're yeah, doing is they're insulting this. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah. oh, nice shirt. Sure. Yeah. You know, you're like, that's, well, that's yeah. code for your boyfriend like, doesn't uh, like you or some yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah, dudes don't do that. Gus yeah. chocks? Is that where you got Yeah, I don't, yeah. if I don't like somebody, I'm not going to call But I mean, don't you think the same thing, right? The, the, it's, if you get a compliment from a guy, it's like, that's a, that's what it's, it's coming from that place yeah. where it's like, I don't feel like it's malicious or it's not like, and they, for them to, no, because the guy up wouldn't the, say anything otherwise. You, like, know, oh, yeah. you know who gives the most compliments in the world? It's the dudes that are trying to get you to sign some random shit in front of the grocery store or whatever to get your attention. <laughs> uh, you guys ever hear that? Uh, yeah. Hey, 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 muscles, where'd you get them hey, guns? Hey, muscles. Hey, they're hey, trying to get you to go over hey, to sign Hey, brick house, get over here. Yeah. Well, I, I go out the opposite door on purpose yeah, when bro. I see that one. Oh, no, I get a phone call every time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll go. Oh, sorry, I got on the call. Go in. And like, oh, I'll catch hey, you. I'll be right. I'll be right there with you, chief. Hey, buddy. Chief. Chief is the best one. Anyway. Anyway. Hey, you know where we're getting a lot of DMs on? So we did that episode a while ago talking about uh, how probiotics can help with inflammation and indirectly with muscle building, fat burning, or whatever. Apparently that worked because it got a lot of people to try seed. We're getting all kinds of DMs now from people who are like, this is not like the probiotic that I took before. Yeah. This makes it. So lots of DMs from people. It's I knew I had a whole to, nother class. I had to tie it to fat loss and muscle building for people to try it, of course. Yeah. But all people are DMing now and they're like, this is the most legit. I meant to tell you, actually, she she messaged me to tell you the last commercial you did for Seed to let you know that my cousin Stephanie, who's battled with all kinds of gut issues forever, she's always got all kinds of stuff mm. going on who you've talked to before. Mm -hmm. uh, she had just started Steed, Steed, Seed, uh, when, right before we had done that, and she's like, "It's." She goes, "I've tried every probiotic yep, you yep. think of," and she goes, "It's hands down the best, the best in the business. Nothing for comes sure. close." Yeah, that's it. No. So I have a uh, a shout out for us. Um, it's somebody who I've followed for quite some time now, and one I love his book. If you haven't uh, read Patrick Bet David's uh, book, Your Next Five Moves. Um, that's worth a read. And then his uh, Instagram and YouTube channel is definitely worth a follow. His business is Valuetainment. So that's a must, must look up. Hey, look, there's a company that put out a great product for sleep. It's called Sleep Breakthrough. This is a pre-bed drink that combines the power of magnesium with natural ingredients like valerian root. So it helps you fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer, and wake up feeling refreshed. The ingredients are backed by science. And it does make a difference. I've been using it and I've been tracking it. Definitely improved my sleep. Go check them out. Go to sleepbreakthrough.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10 for a discount. All right, back to the show. First question is from Jesse Va. On your most recent podcast, you talked about how cardio isn't good for weight loss. But if you're living a sedentary lifestyle and your job requires you to sit for most of the day, is it okay to walk on the treadmill at a steady speed for about 30 minutes? Yeah, of course it's okay. So look, let's just be very clear. As a weight loss tool, cardio sucks. It's great for health. It's great for stamina and endurance. It's great for uh, all the things associated with better health and mobility. So don't not do cardio because, uh, you, you know, you hear us say it's a terrible tool for weight loss. That doesn't mean it doesn't have any value. It's got tons of value. Look, if you're sedentary yeah. and your options are nothing or walking or doing some cardio, like We're it's going to be move. way better. Yeah, our body is built to move and you need to account for the activity throughout uh, the day, the week. And I mean, that's something that's a healthy practice. It's... It's just in terms of like using that as the tool for fat loss. That's one thing that we try to educate people on. There's a better way to, to approach that. Listen, the goal for all of my clients was get to a place when they where they were doing either scheduled cardio every week or some sort of sport or physical activity that they loved. Ideally, I always want that, right? I always want yeah. my clients to pursue something that they love, kayaking, you know, basketball, swimming, these things that they, they these leisure like things where they can do with their friends and, and socialize and also stay healthy and fit from cardiovascular training. But it's a terrible way to start someone on a fat loss journey. So that's the message that we're always trying to send is and it tends to be the go to. So if you were to talk to a doctor, some even today, but even 10 years ago, for sure, and you were obese, uh, one of the first things they tell you to do is start eating salads and have protein shakes and go for a run and run and to burn calories. And it's just a terrible strategy to get somebody in shape. But if I 
teach you how to eat correctly, build muscle, build your metabolism, and then get you to your goal, the next step would be to have some sort of consistent cardiovascular routine that we build into your lifelong routine that's sustainable for uh, forever. Yeah, again, it's just it's it's good for you. It's <clears throat> totally good for you. But look, trying to burn calories through cardio and using that as the way to lose body fat is a losing strategy. The data is clear. Number one, you don't burn as many calories as you think. Number two, your body learns to burn less calories when you do that consistently. Well, how does it do that? Well, it reduces your other activity without you realizing it. But also what it does is it slows your metabolism down by paring muscle down. So the fat loss effects you get from cardio alone are gone in a very short period of time. And then you're stuck with a bit of a slower metabolism. So if you're like, I want to lose fat, that's my goal. What should I do? Uh, it's not cardio in terms of exercise. It's strength training. Now, if you're like, I want to get healthy, I want to lose fat, but I also want to be healthy. Strength training should be the foundation. And then you do some daily activity uh, for your health. So there's 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 tremendous value. Just because something doesn't isn't great for fat loss or weight loss doesn't mean there's no value. There's tons of value in cardiovascular activity just in terms of overall health. It's just a terrible tool when it comes to weight loss. That's all. Next question is from Kirk Pata. When do you know it's time to change up your workout routine? You know, uh, there are signs that uh, will tell you that you might need to change things up. But ideally, you'd want to change your workout or, uh, routine up before you start to see these signs. Yeah. Uh, but the truth is, most of us will like a workout, we'll do it, and then we'll kind of wait to the signs start to pop up. Yeah, so. it's almost like a, a black belt move. Yeah. yeah. Also keep in mind that changing your routine sometimes is just manipulating sets and reps and tempos and rest periods too. Not necessarily the whole thing. Yeah, you don't, you don't. So sometimes people will think that, oh, you know, I heard on Mind Pump that I should, you know, routinely change uh, mm -hmm. my workout routine. And so they think that means you have to go from, oh, this like MAPS anabolic, you know, squat, bench, deadlift type of routine to something totally different. And you have yeah. to, it's like, well, no, the way MAPS anabolic is written is that we take you through different phases within that program. So the you technically could repeat that program multiple times before probably needing to move into something that's more like mobility driven or yeah. multi-planar yeah. type of movements. But you you can change up a routine. Um, I mean, every every couple of weeks with manipulating the sets, the mm -hmm. reps, the tempo, the rest periods, mm -hmm. but stick to some of those big major movers. And then after I maybe I've been following that, maybe I'm lifting uh, anabolic style where maps anabolic style where I'm doing heavy squats and deadlifts and I've been running like in that kind of loop for say six nine months and I start to notice achy joints or things like that's normally my body telling me that it's time to move into something that's more body weight focused or mobility driven or functional training like that's when I'll train yeah I wish I would have uh, put up the other there's another question addressing exactly what you're talking about because they're asking more about like you know how uh, I could, if I changed this one workout routine up, like what would the, would that be okay? Would that be beneficial to me? And it's like, you know, you really don't have to change a lot of the exercises except for the way you do the exercises. Uh, and you know, the only caution I would say, well, so besides like changing like the tempo and the reps and, you know, kind of manipulating some of those variables, uh, you, you do want to consider certain things that are maybe uh, void in, in your programming. So, you know, if you're not moving at all laterally, let's say, if you're not rotating quite as much, if, uh, you know, certain uh, movements aren't being expressed, you know, that's where you want to kind of peer into that because that's something that, you know, your, your, your body is always going to go with uh, strengthening what it's being presented and like what you're constantly kind of uh, engaging with. Uh, so that way, like your body stays strong and effective at those things. Yeah. So, okay. So signs that you need to change. Well, you know, there's the, you know, I'm not getting any more results or I'm not progressing. Now, the, the problem with that is sometimes that has to do with, or oftentimes has to do with other factors. Yeah, nutrition, stress. Yeah, it could be your diet, it could sleep. be your lack of sleep, you know, yeah. stuff like that. But that's a sign, right? That's a sign you want to pay attention to. Pain is a really good one. And not just an injury, but rather- It's you, chronic stiffness. Yeah, you're just kind of noticing your muscles at their insertions are a little sore or exercises that didn't hurt you before. Mm -hmm. Now you're starting to, they're starting to hurt you. Like that's a really good sign. Um, that, you know, something's not right, that you need to change your routine. Um, boredom is a sign, not the be all end all sign. Cause some people just want to change everything all the time, but it's still something to pay attention to. I mean, you could be doing the same workout over and over and just be like, ah, I want to do something different. Well, then that might be a good time to, 
switch up your workout. Um, excess fatigue is another one. Um, or the routine, the routine feels too easy. Now I, I know that that seems like an obvious one and people just make the workout harder, but there's people out there. They'll do the same thing all the time, same weight, even though it gets easier and someone needs to tell them you got to train a little harder now. You know, I see clients like that all the time. They would do the same weight, same exercises yeah. and you need to challenge yourself. So those are some of the classic signs that you need to change your routine. But, but, but for most people, you probably want to stay consistent with what you're doing for at least three to four weeks and then change something. Yeah. Try and stay ahead of it. Yeah. And then change something, the reps, maybe the sets or the tempo. And I would say every three months or so, maybe make more foundational changes to your workouts. That's a, that's kind of a good, uh, I guess, good general advice. Next question is from MJ Huddleston. What is the optimal dose of creatine? So the studies five. are pretty good. Yeah, it's about, I would say about five grams. Although the studies on cognitive improvement show a benefit up to 10 grams. Oh, oh. interesting. So I'm higher doses tend seem to have better effects on cognitive performance. Five grams being right around where you'll get the the great benefits uh, for strength. Creatine's amazing, right? Creatine is probably the best, aside from taking a, a supplement that fills a nutrient deficiency, um, it's probably the best health slash performance supplement that there is, hands down. And I don't mean the best supplement that does both. I mean the best in both categories. I can't think of a health supplement mm. that is generally better than creatine. And I definitely can't think of a better performance enhancing supplement that is generally better than creatine. Creatine is good for your organs, your heart. It uh, It's a methyl donor in essence, meaning it aids in your body's ability to methylate. So you, mm. you can utilize other nutrients uh, better. Um, it's got some anti-inflammatory effects. It helps draw fluid into your cells, yeah. which is Hydrating good. Hydrating the cells. It's, it, it makes you stronger. You recover faster. Um, I mean, like pretty much everybody should be taking creatine. I don't think there's anybody that wouldn't benefit from taking creatine. No, it doesn't even come close. To your point, If it, unless you had something, because I know I'm sure somebody's going like, oh, what about if you have vitamin D? Like, yeah, okay, vitamin D, magnesium. Yeah, if there's a deficiency. If there's a deficiency, yeah. then nothing is better than, than you know getting the optimal amount of a nutrient that you're missing or a vitamin that you're missing. But in, on the performance side, there's no, there's nothing that can, compares to creatine. There never there hasn't been for a very long time, and I don't predict there's going to be anything anytime soon that will surpass that. I'm I'm still waiting for what you predicted a long time ago, which is for us to see that either blended into a multivitamin yeah. uh, supplement or a uh, a packet that's like this is your daily that everybody has to take everything from kids to young adults to uh, elderly. Yeah, what's really crazy, pets, you can give it to your pets. Um, what's really crazy is that it seems like older people benefit even more, hmm. which is crazy, right? Yeah, it's an, crazy. It's an, it, it was originally this muscle building supplement, <sighs> but older people seem to have more of a benefit from creatine than, than younger people do. Everything from cognitive uh, effects to the, stable, the, the effects on, on their body's ability to be strong and stable. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and you don't even have to work out, by the way, to get these effects. You get way more effects if you work out with it. But even if you're sedentary, take some creatine, you'll have some benefit. Next question is from Wampi Irato. Do you see value in adding rotation to horizontal pushing or rowing movements just like you do in the Arnold press? Are they referring to rotation of the hand or the body? Yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking wrists, elbows, and rotating as you're doing the reps. Right? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. well, rotation of the wrist with a with a press. Well, I mean, I guess both. It depends, okay? Because if you're pressing and you're you're rotating the wrist, then your you, elbows it, are moving. Yeah, and you're gonna yeah, your you're gonna involve uh, more of your pec, right? So that's the the old uh, uh, you know. So funny when you this makes me remember like uh, old old clips of people doing flies and they turn their pinkies. The together, opposite of what the pec is the opposite, opposite of what the pec. So, you know, if you were actually doing a fly and you might have seen people do this with dumbbells or cables where they turn their pinkies up, you actually should internally rotate if you want to get more involvement of the pec. Yeah, the so, pec, where it attaches at the humerus, yeah. actually gives you a little bit of internal rotation, so not there, external. So there, there's a there's a little bit of value of pressing and then internally rotating uh, a little bit. Uh, and then also if you row... And let's say you start in this position, and then you and then you rotate it. it it's the elbow, though, not yeah. the wrist. So people are thinking 
rotating the wrist, but it's really the position of the elbow that's dictating what's happening in the back. Yeah, honestly, I always challenge it because uh, from a functional standpoint in like uh, actual like um, uh, the movement of it and the natural movement of it, like I'm always rotating. If you notice you pick yeah. up anything and you're doing anything outside yeah. of like a weird stationary exercise we've invented where you're just like, I have to stay in this weird like um, robotic 90 degree yeah. sort of format. It's just not natural. So for me, I've always just added little hints of rotation because it's, it, it helps to kind of disperse the stress. I don't get a lot of that into my joint as much. Yeah. Um, and so from that aspect, like I always prefer it, but uh, I understand it from like a muscle activation and, yeah. and, a, and a bodybuilder focus of what you're Well, no, to about. support your argument, throw a punch. Nobody throws exactly. a punch. Who throws a punch like this or <laughs> no. throws a punch like this? Everything is Everybody rotation. Has, everything man. has got a and everything has got a rotation. Well, to re it. reach That's out as far as you can in front of your body, and you'll naturally pronate your hand. When you pull back and rotate your palm so that it's neutral, you'll get a little bit more range of motion as well. So it just right. it works with with your natural movement. And then equipment. If you're pressing dumbbells and you want to get a real deep press, you might need to rotate just so you don't hit yourself with the dumbbell. Right? Same thing with a row. You're not going to yeah. hit yourself with a dumbbell, so you might want to rotate it. The, where, Does that play a role? Sure. Where, where this goes wrong is the uh, you know influencer or fitness trainer that's trying to make the case for you know targeting a a part of the yeah. the muscle. They oversell it, don't they? Yeah, and it's you know I think Justin's argument is the best argument for it, which is that it's you know there's naturally if you push and pull, there's a natural rotation that you naturally want to do, and following that path makes a lot of sense. And so for those reasons, then it has value. But I mean, if you're, if you're doing an incline press and you incline press for six weeks, doing it with no rotation, then, then doing it with rotation, you're probably not going to see a major uh, difference in, in growth. And it's not much of a, a, I think a variation change that I would consider it a different exercise or muscle or hitting the muscle that different. Yeah, I agree. Look, if you want workouts every single week, Go to Mind Pump Media on Instagram for under $5 a month. We hook you up with a workout every single week. Again, it's Mind Pump Media on Instagram. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is at Instagram, at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump DeStefano, and you can find Adam at Mind Pump Adam.